morning everyone. Uh, welcome back to the Fishing Lakes Apiary. This is one of our other apiaries that we have here at the Fishing Lakes. And I don't know if you can see, but over my shoulder there's some very dark clouds heading this way. Don't know what's happened with the weather recently, but we're just not hitting any settled conditions for the bees. It's been very hit and miss. We've been trying to get out and inspect the bees and then having to dash back to the truck to hide from the rain. And we've had some very heavy rainfall uh, in between thunder and lightning. The bees really don't like the thunder and lightning. And uh, it's just been really stop start, very similar to last year when we had that very wet summer. And hopefully we will get towards some settled weather at some point, uh, but the season's progressing. Uh, here at the fishing lakes, we're looking, I'm looking around just off camera, the blackberries are starting to flower. So in terms of a June gap, uh, there's not going to be a huge amount, I don't suspect, in terms of time between the spring flowering plants finishing and the summer plants coming into flower. It feels like it's about to start raining, so I need to crack on with this. And um, what I wanted to show you today were just two or three of the very small splits that we made that we put queen cells into. We had a couple of colonies here at our apiary where uh, we'd missed swarms, they produced some queen cells. And so I wanted to just split those down and try and produce some spare queens uh, should should we need them. Uh, so we're going to dash back into the truck because it's now starting to rain and as soon as we get a break in the weather we'll pop back into the apiary and have a look at some of those nukes and just talk a little bit about the time it takes for those queen cells to emerge, for those virgin queens to get mated and for you to actually see eggs in that colony because I know that a lot of people, particularly beginner beekeepers, see that they don't have any eggs in a colony, can't find the queen, and rush out and buy a new queen, introduce that queen, and then that queen gets killed because there's already a queen in there. So we'll have a look uh, and discuss that more as soon as it stops raining. A little bit of smoke at the entrance. So these colonies are not really even colonies to be honest. These are splits from a colony that swarmed where we took literally a queen cell and threw it into a box. We don't have anything in this side. We've got, here we are. So we've got our single frame here and all we were trying to do is to produce uh, a, a mated queen. Slugs everywhere. It's just unbelievable how many slugs seem to appear. So we just threw some um, bees in with this queen cell. So a single frame in this instance, literally just trying to get a mated queen because sometimes they don't always get out and mate and sometimes you find that they um, they struggle so you know, I'm looking down into uh, this particular frame you can see we've got a huge patch of sealed brood here and I'm just looking to see the queen we have eggs so we've got a mated queen. So somewhere down here, there are lots of, lots of eggs. And uh, this was a split that we made at the beginning of May. So we're looking now, this is like four weeks on. Uh, can't see the queen. As, as always, when you try to find the queen, you can never see her, but if you just touch the back of the bees, it kind of spreads them around a little bit. It's quite cold in this spot at the moment. Uh, another slug there. It's amazing how they, how they get in. Let's have a look. Let's see if I can spot the queen for you. 
Um, but it's good to see that we have plenty of brood here. And it might be that she's on another frame. Let's have a look. They've started working on a different frame, but usually you would look at the frame where uh, you've got eggs uh, because that's where she's most likely to be. So in terms of the process, um, actually these bees are quite short on food. You might be able to see that they don't have a great deal of food, so we should give them a little bit of syrup, I think. Uh, and uh, the process of the queen emerging and then getting out to lay is, is very hit and miss and very dependent on the weather. So it really depends on the weather conditions that you have, the, the time of year, so very early in the season it might get delayed, but the weather has been so terrible that we've found that several of the queens that we have had emerge actually haven't really done a great deal in terms of getting out to, uh, to mate. It's been really quite problematic. Yet some seem to have got out and have done very well indeed. So uh, there's no hard and fast rule to it, but it looks like we have a laying queen in here, uh, which is good. Uh, I just need to be able to find her. We'll have one more look at this frame and then we'll, we'll go and have a look at another, another frame in another box to see if we can spot our queen. She's probably enormous. It's off, often the way with trying to, uh, to see new laying queens. Um, can't see her, not easily. So rather than waste time, let's get them put back together. I'll top them up with a little bit of food and then we can have a look at one of the other little nukes that we've created to see whether we've got a laying queen in those. So here we've got one of our little honey paw nukes and this one was exactly the same as the the previous. It, it came from the same batch. Again we've only got the one frame in here so uh, we'll see whether or not the queen has emerged and been able to get out and mate. And it's really important that you don't rush into checking too often because you want to make sure that you give the queen time to be able to emerge. Now you can see here at the bottom there's actually two queen cells, both emerged. Uh, I'm just, uh, one trick you can use when you're trying to find a queen is to look down the flat part of the frame because the queen very often holds herself off the frame, so off the comb, so she, she's a little bit uh, raised up compared to the workers that she's walking around with. So I can't see her on that side, so we'll have another look on this side, see if we can spot her. I'm looking just around the edge to see if I can see eggs and we've got eggs here so we do have a, a queen, a laying queen in here so it's taken a while for her to um, to get going but um, it looks as if these bees have been a bit busier than the previous colony because they've drawn out this comb and she's laid up this frame as well. Uh, so I don't see her on that side. Have we got her on this side? It's amazing how when you want to demonstrate to people uh, uh, something to do with the Queen that they somehow just completely disappear. So I'm, at this point, I'm looking around the frame in a kind of circular motion, just scanning across. And very often you'll notice that the queen walks across the comb in, 
in a slightly different way to the other bees, to the drones and, and the workers. And so uh, you spot her because of the way she's moving rather than because she's bigger or different shape. So don't see her on there. Just looking down at the side of the nuke box to see if she's on uh, the side of the box, which she's not. And then we have this one additional frame that they're working on. Same process, just scanning around Uh, looking into the cells to see if we've got any eggs that have been laid. I can't see any eggs on this this frame. So yeah, second attempt. <laughs> second attempt to try and show you a queen, a new laying queen, and uh, uh, unfortunately it looks like I've drawn a blank. So we'll just go through once more. There's another slug in here. Let's get that one out. Get rid of the slug. Let's have one more look through. So this two-frame nuke, as it is, is not going to do anything except get itself a little bit bigger this summer. So where you have small nukes, don't expect them to do anything uh, other than grow and uh, get prepared really to overwinter um, because if you can overwinter them successfully then in the following season uh, they'll do so much more for you. So still looking, still can't see her. So for all of you out there that struggle to spot your queen, you're not alone. Don't think that it's it's you. There she is. Okay, so she's not, um, she's not exactly huge by comparison to the others. And if I hold this frame and we get a close-up on it, maybe you'll see her. And I'll give you just a few seconds to try and spot her on this face of this frame. And then I'll slow it down and pop a circle on it to highlight where she is. So a few more seconds. Can you see her? And here's a circle, and she's not much bigger than the rest of the workers, to be honest. So I've just turned the frame back to reconfirm that the queen's on there. Can't see her again now. She's, she is really quite small. Uh, anyway, I will uh, have a look. Oh, here's an interesting sign as well. We've actually got a worker, a newly emerged worker, and it's got a Varroa mite on its back just here. So I don't know if the camera is able to pick that up, but you can see this worker as she moves across here. She has... Um, has a varroa mite on her back. So we need to maybe look at getting these treated. Now, obviously we're not going to produce any honey from them this summer. So uh, we can go ahead and treat them with any of the various methods that we, uh, that we want to um, without having to be too concerned about uh, producing honey and any contamination getting through into that that honey. So something to just bear in mind with this little nuke. Uh, maybe we'll go with um, maybe a thigh mole treatment. Uh, just half a half a treatment. Just a small amount. Just to try and knock back those uh, those varroa. So uh, let's have a look at one more. We've got another one in a in the corner. Let's just go and have a look to see if we've got a laying queen in that one. Uh, and with any luck, it'll be three out of three. So while I'm just unpackaging this one, uh, it's probably worth mentioning that, you know, sometimes it is very difficult to spot your queen. 
And if you can't see eggs, then there's a temptation to assume that actually you don't have a queen. Rush out and buy a new queen, introduce that new queen, and your new expensive queen gets destroyed because they already have a, a queen in there. So just be patient and keep an eye on what's going on. So in here, I've got a couple of frames that are not spaced properly. So we need to just try and move those out of the way a bit. We can get this one up and out. There we go. Well, again, we have a laying queen. So three out of three. Isn't it amazing that when you want to produce queens, sometimes it's, it's not possible. And then when you just throw a queen cell into a box, hey presto, you, you get queens. Now you might notice actually, I think these bees are actually running around a lot faster than the previous nuke that we looked at. So uh, maybe these bees won't be quite as nice as the previous colony. Uh, however, we do have a lot of brood emerging. So these have taken somewhere in the region of two weeks to come out of uh, their queen cell, get off and mate and start laying again. So it was a fairly rapid um, process for them to get mated. And I guess at that time we had a little bit of reasonable weather and uh, things have kind of gone downhill from there, haven't they really? Uh, so we have the queen cell that the queen emerged from just over here. I don't know if you can see that. The bees are now chewing that queen cell down and that will disappear over time if you don't, as a beekeeper, take it out completely yourself. Um, and we've got quite a lot of brood here that's starting to emerge. There's a worker just here that's starting to emerge. Uh, I haven't seen the queen on this frame. Pop it over have a quick look. Still quite chilly down in this corner of the apiary so we don't want to leave them for too long. Looks like we've managed to dodge the weather. Yeah these bees are running around an awful lot faster than the the previous little nuke. We've got lots of eggs over here. Um, looking down into the cells and I can see them here. People describe them as a grain of rice. What they're referring to is the shape and not the size. Don't, if you're new to beekeeping, don't hear that description and expect to see something the size of a grain of rice. What people are referring to is actually the shape and the color rather than the size. They're very, very small. So don't, um, don't expect to see some great big grain of rice sized uh, egg in the bottom of the cell. Again, um, just quickly looking across here, I can't see the queen, but uh, no real problem there. We don't want to keep these open for too long. Let's just come back very quickly. A quick glance across, same this side, quick glance around several drones. The bees all look quite healthy, so pleased about that. And uh, again, these can go into a full-size hive once we get them uh, fully across all four frames. These honey pour nukes are four frame nukes and once they're right the way across we can transfer them into a full-size hive. Uh, just quickly glancing, can't see the queen so get that 
frame back in and then this final frame is she on here if she is I'm not seeing her so slide this one back in very gently we're gonna have to do a little bit of work with these other frames that we've got because uh, they've drawn out the honey stores at the top a little bit too wide and I'll maybe shoot a video showing you how to deal with that another time. We'll shake these bees off, just brush them back on and then we can get this roof back on. So a really successful little experiment there, taking a queen cell on a frame, popping it into a nuke box, a full-size hive, just one frame is all you really need. You do need to have enough bees on that frame to look after the queen cell, but once she emerges, she'll start to lay eggs. Again, she'll only lay enough eggs that those workers can cope with. So if it's just a single frame, it's going to take a while for them to build up. But we now have three queens. I think the middle queen that we looked at is probably the calmest of them all. So if I were going to keep just one, then it would be that queen that I would keep. Uh, but maybe we can just build these up now through the summer, overwinter them, and then we'll have some nice colonies for next year. If you've got any questions about virgin queens, about matings, any of those kind of questions, then pop them beneath the video. But if not, we'll catch up next time. Thanks for watching.